been accepted in some forms of modern Christianity that you can think of. Were you guys able to think about this at all this week and think of anything? If you didn't, that's okay. Yeah, just ask. Um, I, I see um, the peace sign in the Gauls. Okay. You know, they mean it as like, you know, upside down broken cross to show, you know, Jesus, whatever, this respect to Jesus. Yeah. Is. I guess two questions I have. Um, do you think that when people do that, they're normally referring to Christianity? Well, it originally was for Christianity. I mean, not for Christianity, but to dis to discredit or disrespect his Christianity. In a way, sometimes in some contexts. But remember, it's also related to the nuclear disarmament of the, uh, you know, the the flag signs and everything. It was also related with, you know, how Peter was hung upside down. It was... But it's a broken cross, though, isn't it? I mean, there's no yes for sure answer on this. It has a lot of mixed background. Um, I have never referred to it as the broken cross. Uh, I've always referred to it as the upside-down cross, so I don't know specifically what you're... It sounds like you're talking about something specific. Um, and I'm, without knowing what you're talking about, I have a hard time, you know, knowing whether to, see what I mean? No, I've, <coughs> I've actually heard it called a broken cross because the, the two mm -hmm. things point down. And, and what was the point of it? Just, just disrespect. Like oh, okay. Said. I have heard that. This is new to me. <laughs> okay. Um, and then another question I would have is, do, do is that, I guess I'm out of the loop, is that, is that a common thing in modern Christianity? I mean, like, it's not, they, I feel like a lot of Christians were not knowing what it actually means. Oh. It's like, you know, like, having a Buddha in your house, but you don't actually know what it means, I think. To me, it does. Oh, okay. And to me, it, to me it, I, I, for some reason, it kind of, it's like, why are you wearing that? But some people are just like, oh, it doesn't matter anymore, so... I guess it just depends on your opinion. Okay. All right. I'm, I wasn't mean to downgrade your opinion. I totally no. didn't mean that at all. So I uh, kind of sent it off like I was trying to be douche. Anybody else? Um, or anything else? One thing I, I, I don't really know if you count it as just cult theme for that, but like the, um, the coexist yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas it, it seems like a good idea, and, that, and you see Christians buying into it. Yeah. I don't really class. I classify it more as like new ageish for that, or <coughs> a cult, but it kind of just throws it all in there together. So. As far as I'm concerned, I would always define the new age as part of the occult because like they yeah. practice the yeah. same things. Yeah. They just repackage it in they a different way. They just try to define it. Yeah, I mean, it's the same things, you know, whatever, but, you know, whatever. Um, anybody else? Or anything else? If you think of anything, stop me and let me know, okay? So just some things that I thought, um, that I, uh, that I thought of. Um, first off is sexual immorality, and uh, that's a really big thing in the occult. I know we don't often think of it like that, but in the beginning, God created it as one man, one female. And from there, people going their own ways decided to redefine it by one man with many women. Or by, you know, all these different things, one man with another man. Why not? You know, hey, every, anything goes, you know. And, and just uh, that idea of there is no rules to it. And uh, you see that very dominant in the modern church of today. You know, um, through, not just through homosexuality, although that is, has become a very um, highlighted topic, I guess, uh, but also through, through, through premarital and extramarital uh, 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 um, sex and um, interaction. Uh, you know, like, not, and I'm not just talking about pornography, I'm talking about open marriages and that kind of stuff. These are things that, and we really go against everything that God intended for marriage and for sex. 
And, uh, you know, very, the cult, once again, is not so concerned about God's standard. Hey, if it feels good, if it's love, it's love, right? So it kind of goes against exactly that. Um, uh, with the cult kind of has this whole sen sensual, emotion-based love, and the church is starting to buy into it. You know what I mean? Where instead of just loving being more about what you do, it's all about, well, how you feel. You know, it's, well, that's... Feelings are such a small part about love that it's almost not even worth mentioning. I mean, every, anybody can say, say that you love somebody, but love is truly shown by your staying with them, by your, yeah, you know... By your actions. Actions, absolutely. Um, no, there's, so as a result, there's no such thing as, a sin, as sin or hell. You know, a lot of Christians buy into this. There's no such thing as hell. God's not going to send people to hell. Um, a, a, a popular author, uh, Rob... Rob Bell uh, wrote a book called um, Love Wins, I think is what it's called. And basically, he didn't necessarily straight out say it, per se, as strongly implied that all people will either eventually be saved or get another chance in hell or, you know, somehow that they'll just cease to exist or something because God, being loving, would no way um, allow people to suffer forever. Yeah. You know, and obviously I, I see the appeal of that view, but that's not something that's actually said in the Bible. When the Bible talks about it, it always talks about, you know, an ongoing thing. So we can't trade out for what is actually said by what sounds really good, you know. Um, but once again, just the kind of loveless love, I guess, um, we see do what thou wilt being very common, very common in, in the Christian church. Like, um, it, it's just unbelievable how many people call themselves Christians and say, I'm not bound by the law. You know, I can do whatever I want as long as it doesn't hurt somebody else. And it's like, that, 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 that's actually witchcraft and Satanism that says that, not Christianity. Christianity has never said that, okay? Some people in, in the church have said that, but that's not what the Bible actually says. Um, and then, obviously, there's extremists on this always. There's always going to be extremists. And so then there's other people who still try and follow the law, you know, obviously. Uh, but that's not really associated with the cult. The, the do what thou wilt would be more associated with the cult. Um, Jesus is something less than God. Now, a lot of times, people will even say this. Oh, no, Jesus is God. But somewhere in there, there's just isn't quite that connected. Yes, it's the exact same um, place, the exact same uh, worth, the exact same substance and character. It's the same. There's only one God. Yeah. See what I mean? And somewhere, in most Christians that I've talked to, there's still, no matter how many times you say it, there's still a little bit of, but Jesus is maybe like, a small step smaller than the Father. You know, it's like, well, Maybe he's no. <laughs> like, yeah, honestly. So then people have different ideas and cults, and occults have really added to this. He's either an archangel, or he's a, a demigod, or he's um, another god, or he is. Um, did I say angel already? Yeah, yeah I did. Um, you know, all these different ideas about, you know, who he is, and it's like, well, no, not, not really, though. <laughs> um, but that's very common in the cult. In fact, in almost all seances where Jesus comes up, they'll oftentimes talk about how Jesus wasn't really the Christ, you know. And uh, in, in a lot of teachings, Jesus wasn't the Christ. And that's uh, that's gotten to be what's accepted in, in the church, and it's gotten to be where people don't think it's that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. The Holy Spirit is not really God. We don't really need him here. It's fine. Uh, Jesus, you know, whatever you want to believe, yeah, sure, he's the only way to heaven, but he's not really, you know, God, God. I mean, as long as you love the Father, I mean, it'll all work out. And it's like, well, I, I hear what you're saying, but you obviously didn't read the Gospels, because <laughs> that's just not right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, Bible is not an authority, but Mount's own invention, which always amuses me, because then they follow their own inventions. Yeah. Like, like the, this gets me, the satanic church. Where they'll believe what Anton LaVey said, even though they're saying, okay, we're going to not listen to the Bible because that was man's invention, so now we're going to listen to Anton LaVey's invention. <laughs> Which, by the way, he doesn't even have any claim to, because as he said, Satan isn't a real person. So who gave him the authority to speak? At least the Bible has some form of authority behind it, like, oh yes, Moses talked with God. Right. You know, the prophets had revelations from God. Oh, yeah, Grace, uh, did you want Kit Kat or Skittles? Kit Kat. Um, and then, 
Satan and the demonic don't exist. A lot of Christians just walk in this, ju just in this place of just absolute stupidity, where they're just convinced that, that you know, hey, we don't have to actually do spiritual warfare. <laughs> Are you insane? <laughs> have you lost your mind? Like, but that's a, a very common thing in, in the church today. There's no battle, or, or or vice versa. You know, some people go to the other extreme of this, and everything. everything's a battle. There's demons in everything. That you know, you, you have to cast demons out of it. You have to cast the demons out of your milk before you drink it. You know what I mean? Just like way too far on stuff. Now that's not actually a thing. But what were you gonna say? I see this. Uh, this woman she worked out of prison. No. Uh -huh. She's now in prison. Uh, this inmate was having a seizure, and she started to perform an exorcism on it. On him because she thought he was possessed. Oh, Jesus. And he ended up dying like two days later. Right. <laughs> As I said, discernment. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's just some of the things that I thought. Now I didn't do it where there's going to be it popping up one at a time because I know some of you guys take notes, and this one's I'm going to try not to go real long. So <clears throat> takes us to the idea of witchcraft. We looked at all the all the other ones. I guess it's just a matter of time before we got to this one, right? Mm -hmm. um, so witchcraft, which is actually considered witchcraft to be a practice, not a religion. So as a result, they can claim to be things like Christian, Satanist, or whatever, and just claim that they practice the craft. They call it the craft. Isn't that nifty? <laughs> the craft. <laughs> um, how crafty of them. Um, now, there is a, an idea going that wizard means a wise person or a sage. Um, and then witches use the term as a uh, male uh, witch. Historically, it could potentially mean wise or sage, but it also could very, uh, very, very uh, likely mean a witch, not male or female exclusive, mm -hmm. which means that the term witch is not female. It's either a male or female. Same for wizard. Wizard is either a male or a female who practices witchcraft. Okay, so... Um, there's a lot of a lot of you know modern inventions even even among the 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 witch community of of the world today where they use wizard for a male and witch for a female and that's not historically based what like about war? What about war? Yeah, war. that is um as far as I can tell is not gender exclusive let me check um I don't remember that one having a uh, gender exclusion but um. Um, it's very. Uh, it was very uh, common. I believe it was in Satanism they used the term warlock. Let me check. I actually didn't check on this, like t for for sure. Huh. I remember studying about it, but I don't really remember whether it said the warlock was gender specific. Hmm. Hmm, it's not in the back. Um, let me double, let me check on that. Um, let me see. Now, here's how they get around the issue of where do they get the supernatural power. They just simply say that in nature there is power inherent in it, and this power can be tapped into to be used for good or bad. Therefore, the power in and of itself isn't bad. So it's okay for them to communicate with demons because they're not really communicating with demons. See how they get around that? Uh, Awful convenient, isn't it? Right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so they deny their connection with, with Satan. Uh, now, there are some people think that there's a distinction between white and black witches. Um, this is actually very common, especially in the like last century. Yeah. Uh, and some people still hold to it. A lot of people just ditched on it. I mean, people even nowadays have very conflicted ideas about it. Um, <clears throat> the, the supposed distinction would be how they use their powers. Like, if you're familiar with Disney cartoons from that era, like uh, The Sword in the Stone. Yeah. Um, Merlin would yeah. be considered a white witch. Right. And uh, the other chick, um, yeah. Mad uh, Madam Mim, she yes. would be considered a dark witch. Or black, I'm sorry, a black witch. Um, now... 
I believe it was Anton LaVey who actually laughed at, the, at, at this and said there's no such thing as a white witch because they're just people who are still being held down by the Christian, you know, whatever. Uh, I believe that was Anton LaVey. It might have been Aleister Crowley, but I'm pretty sure it was Anton LaVey that said that. Um, so once again, it is, a, it is kind of an issue. Um, it seems like there's no such thing as white or black uh, amongst witches. Okay. But from a Christian perspective, there for sure isn't such a thing as white or black which, because it doesn't matter how you intend to use dark powers, God told us not to use them. So, <laughs> irrelevant to what you call yourself. Um, but, however, it's going to differ from who you talk to. You will still probably still find witches today, absolutely, who still call themselves white witches. Were you going to say something? Uh, I have, I looked it up, and it's, they say that this, what I found is saying that a warlock is someone who has been granted a magical power, where a witch or a wizard has gone to school for. But it's not gender gender it's not specific. Gender specific. Okay. It's now, see, that's what I was looking at with. I believe it. You know, don't hold me to this, but I'm pretty sure it's in the Church of Satan, where in one of the levels it's a warlock or um, a warlock of something. Uh, I think it's like the fourth tier or something like that. Um, you know, I bet you I can find that. Um, and it didn't really specify um, in here whether there was a difference between a a, a, a male or a female. First degree member just makes you a member. Second degree is called a witch or a warlock. Okay. It doesn't. It doesn't. Seems like it doesn't specify. It, you know, it, it gives the possibility that a witch is for a female and a warlock is for a male, but it doesn't say that. Now, like I said, a lot of a lot of uh, modern uh, religions and whatnot make a distinction between witch as a female, even though it's not historically based. Okay. So. What, what about the uh, Wicca? What? Wicca. Wicca is actually religion. Okay. So we're going to look at that in just a second. Okay. Um, it is distinct from witchcraft, sort of, but they're kind of the same thing. I'll, yeah, I'll come, I'll, just give me a second. I'll come back to that. Um, so Llewellyn Encyclopedia defines magic as a science and art of causing change in consciousness to occur in conformity with will, using means not currently understood by traditional Western science. Translation, magic is the way of manipulating things to get uh, – manipulating the natural world to get what you want. Basically. Okay. Be it health – be it secret knowledge, be it oneness with the world, whatever. Um, be it revenge. <laughs> so, um, the Bible defines a witch as someone who summons occult powers to do their bidding. Okay, this is called many different things. A witch, someone who practices magic or whispers spells. I believe the term in the Bible is actually a, a spell whisperer. Um, a medium, a sorcerer. These are kind of kind of all. Uh, which kind of in the Bible, the idea of it kind of takes them all together, you know. Um, the Bible just kind of lumps these things together and says, don't do this. You know, I, I, in fact, in Deuteronomy, for instance, he actually does goes to the extremes of saying, don't do this and this and this and this. Even though they're practically the same thing, he still lists them differently right. to say, just in case you missed what I was saying, I don't want you doing all any of that. <laughs> And we'll probably look at that next week, maybe, but I don't know. I might just well, let it go so with that. We're so stubborn, we'll say, well, he didn't say I couldn't do that. Right, no, I right. I, yeah. Oh, he didn't say this. <clears throat> um, is they call their power different things. Some of them call them elemental forces. Some of them call them magic. Some of them call it the universe. You know, it's the energy in the world. It just depends what their um, preference is. You're going to find that a lot in witchcraft, that there really is, is very loose authority structure. Like... It's kind of just you do whatever you want. And you, although you, you can be a part of a coven that technically yeah. has like a sisterhood or brotherhood or whatever you want to say, there still isn't specifically like you have to believe this. It's kind of like because it's con they consider themselves a practice and not a religion. It's kind of just you just do similar things and you have your own views and that's they okay. They kind of just set the ground rules. Right. Well, it's kind of like individuality is prized. They just have guidelines. Well, so, yeah, yeah, and no. Well, yes and no, because it depends once again which coven. Some covens, for instance, will have will have like, or some groups. You know, I shouldn't say coven because that's more of a specific thing. But some groups will just kind of have like, we're gonna get together and, and have a seance. Right. And that's just the end of it. Like, there's no, no. Are you a Christian? Are you? You know, there's no anything. It's just we're all going to get together and have seance. But then other ones would have a little bit more. Once again, witchcraft prizes its prides itself on your individuality. Okay, 
once again, Chuck mentioned at the beginning of the lesson the idea of coexisting. Witches are love that kind of an idea. They just absolutely adore it. So uh, it's going to be very much that. Um, but obviously we know that their power is not from God, which means where does their power come from? Because there is no power just sitting in the world for us to grab onto. The only other energy source that's supernatural besides God is Satan. Yeah. So if they're not going to get from God... It has to be. <laughs> um... <clears throat> They practice occult activities, but they have very broad understandings about why they do it, why they shouldn't do something. You know, they just kind of do what thou wilt wasn't just part of Satanism. It's also in part of uh, a large part of witchcraft. Um, Wicca has their own little mantra thing that they that they hold to, and witchcraft kind of holds to part of it. Um, anyways. So they, they more emphasize the idea of just being spiritual, you know, being connected with Mother Earth and all that stuff. Um, homeopathic remedies are oftentimes connected with witches and stuff like that. Um, I'm not saying all homeopathic met methods are evil. I'm just saying um, witches are more into homeopathic methods than your average person because they believe that your body can heal itself and that your body just needs to get in tune with stuff and that kind of stuff. Um, so obviously they're going to rely on homeopathic me medicine rather than science medicine, you know, like medicine you get from a doctor. Now, I personally believe that doctors were placed there for a benefit. I think we should always put our trust in God, but I think that we should utilize what's there. Um, I think that there's always a danger of trusting doctors too much, and I think that we need to make sure that we trust God for, first and foremost. I think there's a huge danger in taking too many medications. In fact, we were talking about this with the antibiotics, how, you know, your body just, it can't, handle antibiotics all the time you know right. it's just it's just not good for it um and so there is that you know there is a limit where, where our bodies can like process so much medication um jimmy lee was on there for a while 20 something medications and that's just a lot of medications basically a walking zombie basically a walking zombie like and here's the thing like i don't even understand why they would prescribe that much because our our bodies really can't just sit there processing that much no. You know what I mean? Like, well, it's just not much, good. That much stuff. No. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just, just not, it's just not, not a great idea to have that much. Now, once again, I would say yes. We do need to make sure that you know we take care of our bodies and that kind of stuff. But yeah. there is a balance between like, you know. Well, yeah. The <laughs> thing about that is you've got um, everything you take. <laughs> Pretty much, it comes from a doctor who's going to counteract something else. So yeah. basically, his body was sitting there fighting itself. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. honestly, yeah. and like, so here's the thing: I take a multivitamin every day, and that's the only pill I take every day. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just think that there's better ways to uh, yeah. to do things. Like, for instance, don't eat McDonald's every day. Well, I think yeah. that's a really good idea for having don't no eat. health don't problems. Eat. <laughs> don't, eat. don't eat. Don't eat it. You know. Uh, McDonald's just is gross anyway, so like that won't be that hard to give up. It's made out of old <laughs> That's gross. That's really gross. Um, so, um, okay, so who's that? Now, that takes us to Wicca. Now, Wicca is actually a religion, okay? Now, so not all witches are Wiccans, and not all Wiccans are witches, by their claims. Wow. Now, I honestly don't see that big of a distinction between Wiccan and a witch. Honestly, I really don't. However, if they want to claim that, we'll we'll hold them to the nuts. That's, that's fine. Whatever they want to do. The you know, everybody does, but they're not. Wicca is actually a religion. Witchcraft is a practice according to what they claim. Now, once again, though, that doesn't really quite make sense, though, because what witches do could be defined as a religion. Like, it follows under the definition of a religion. But, you know, I'm not trying to, trying to start anything. If they want to claim well, that, whatever. One thing. Go ahead. One thing you've got to realize is how much Hollywood influences yeah. Yeah. Oh my the gosh. fiction of um, yeah. Buddy, yeah. all of this. Just so much. Um, that's probably Ben, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So uh, <laughs> it was actually influenced by Aleister Crowley. Um, which, once again, you'd be surprised how big of an impact Aleister Crowley had in the occult world. Like, not just in Satanism, guys. I mean, he was involved in everything. He influenced modern witchcraft. He influenced uh, uh, modern Satanism. I mean, just so many different things in, in the world of the occult. Like, 
he, he, it's the it's Satan's version of Billy Graham. I swear. Like he had no, his feet bro, in everything. Honestly. Like it's unbelievable how big of an impact this man had on. So on creepy looking too. <laughs> like who would follow him? <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. Um, but anyways, um, Wiccans practice the worship of what's called the Lord and Lady. Okay? And actually, they, they have these eight uh, witch holidays throughout the year that are focused on different things. Like, for instance, I believe it's Halloween where the where the Lord dies and the Lady goes into grieving. And then he isn't reborn until, I want to say, like, either the winter solstice or something. I forget what. Um but Wicca uh, included it is the belief in many gods. So um, they may worship the Lord and Lady, but there are other gods too. Um, now, this is the Wiccan chant that I was talking about, the thing that they hold to. And it harm none, do what you, do what you will. Now, witchcraft more broadly holds to that last part, do what you will, yeah. but they don't necessarily hold that first part, and it harm none. Okay? That... Wicca specifically holds that first part and it harm none. Um, now, Wiccans believe in a form of karma that is called the threefold force or something like that, or threefold principle, or I forget what it's called. But anyways, basically, whatever good or and good or bad is done will be returned back to you three times as severe or as impactful or whatever. Um, it, they, there's supposedly a distinction from witchcraft. I was having a heck of a hard time finding it um, because witchcraft is so broad yeah. that you could technically be a Wiccan who's into witchcraft. And, and then it's like they do the same thing. So it's like yeah. I guess the distinction would be that Wiccans place more of an emphasis on the Lord and Lady, whereas witchcraft focuses more on – See, I don't even know how you would make a distinction. I can't... The spells Well, no, not necessarily. Some of them focus on spells. Some of them don't. So it's like, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's very hard to define. I would just say this. Wicca is a religion. Uh, Witchcraft is a practice, whatever, um, <laughs> that is inherently connected in some way with Wiccan. Now, okay. obviously, Wiccans would not, believe, would not not agree with what I just said, but, you know. Right. If they have a distinction, they really ought to say it. Right. Um, the personal spirituality is emphasized. It's you know, it's all about you know you and just wherever you're at and that kind of stuff. There really is no standard. Um, the ones who aren't real spiritual or whatever, real connected, still uh, still follow the eight holidays or the eight was called Sabbaths. Okay, not Sabbath, Sabbath. Okay. <laughs> Um, this is them in order. The winter solstice, also called the Yule, Imbolc, Ostera, uh, Boltane, uh, Midsummer, Lammas, Mabon, and then Selene. <laughs> now, um, this I thought was interesting. Um, when A few weeks ago, I was um, doing some... I had already researched um, Halloween, but I figured... Because there was somebody who said some really stupid stuff. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to make sure. And yeah, I was right, and they were wrong. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Winter solstice is on December 21st. Now, this is right before Christmas, but I put Christmas time on there because it happens oh, at the same yeah. time, okay? Now, the Catholic Church was real famous for making right. holidays at the same time as pagan yeah. things. So you're going to find that a lot of Christian holidays are going to be around the same time. Now, they're oftentimes going to be even on the same day. But they're going to be called two different things, and they're going to have two different ideas to them, okay? Like Halloween. Now, I'll get there in just a second. Um, then Imbolc is um, in the Northern Hemisphere, February 2nd. Now, remember, all of these have two different dates that they're celebrated depending on whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or se Southern Hemisphere. Huh. Like, for instance, Winter Solstice is December 21st or June 21st. Huh. See what I mean? Okay. So... Um, another thing, why it doesn't make sense to make Halloween the evil day, because technically Samhain, um has two days, October 31st or April 30th. Yeah. So it really doesn't make sense to say that Halloween is inherently evil. So, I don't know, whatever. Um, Imbolc is around Groundhog Day. Um, actually, it might be exactly on on Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day is February 2nd, right? Yes. Yeah? Okay, well then it is. Um, Ostera, um, <laughs> around Easter time, let's see. Um, I think Ostera is always on March 21st, and I think Easter is always on a Sunday, so it's yeah. not always on the 21st, right? Yeah, Easter changes the right. date. Right, yeah. but it's always on Sunday. Yes. Yeah, so it's around that time. Um, uh, Beltane is made is basically May Day. Okay. okay. So uh, you see it on your calendar, it says May Day. 
that's the same day as uh, Beltane. Uh, Midsummer, um, I mean, obviously, a lot of um, cultures have had a Midsummer, you know, celebration. Uh, Lammas is, is basically a harvest festival. Um, Mabon is also a harvest festival, which is closer to Thanksgiving. Um, and a lot of people even claim that it's somehow connected with Thanksgiving, but I don't see that at all. Mm-hmm. It's on September 21st, and Thanksgiving is on November 24th? 20? No, it changes dates. Oh, it's the, thir- it's the third Thursday of yeah. November. Uh, anyways, so I, I don't really see how they're connected, but I mean, I might just be off on that one. Mm-hmm. Now, that takes us to the last one, which in recent years has become the most well-known of the of the ho- of the witch holidays. Yeah. Or the Wiccan holidays, whatever you want to say. And that's Samhain, uh, which is on the exact same day as Halloween, uh, October 31st. Now, here's the thing, though. Um, the practices are totally different. Um, Halloween has got its roots um, from a whole Catholic thing that was going yeah. on. And although it is on the same day, there's nothing that's shared in the in the practices at all. Um, I mean, people will, will point to ja- jack-o'-lantern carving. That wasn't necessarily associated with, with occultic anything. No. They used to actually carve out turnips. And uh, when they came here, they used pumpkins instead, and they, it looks like they used it just for a, a light, like to use lamp post, or like a lamp thing kind of thing. They may have potentially used it for some kind of occultic practice, but if they did, there's no way of knowing for sure. So we can't honestly say that carving out a pumpkin is inherently evil, can we? Now, yes, in some cultures they did dress up and do scary things, with, with but that was, once again, the, the whole purpose of that was connected with the spirits that they were supposedly going to meet that night or representing whatever you want to hold to um and they did they did really scary costumes not for not you know for for the uh, interaction with the evil that they were going to do that night now in america we dress up but we dress up in, in more fun things and it has no real no connection with that except for the idea of dressing up now once again dressing up is inherently evil if that's so, then every actor on the television is evil. Right. Even Christian actors, because they're dressing up too. You know, the act itself of dressing up is not evil. Right. I mean, I, I don't know of any Christian who would really hold to that when you really look at it. Um, next off, uh, the whole witch thing was only added when Halloween was became commercialized. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Sao actually has more of things like seances and stuff. They do witchcraft things. Now, is it on the same day? Yes. But that's like saying I can't celebrate Christmas Day because it's very close to the winter solstice. Now, how does that make any sense? See what I mean? Like, it's not so much the day because, like Paul said, some people think that one day is holy. Some people think that all the days are holy. Now, are you saying that Satan has a claim on a day where all of a sudden it's no longer the day that God has made and it's now the day that Satan has made? Well, obviously we know that's not true. God made all the days. All that's important is that we seek God with those days. You know what I mean? Like some Christians, I don't even understand what their point is. So you're saying for Halloween or for these other days that you have a problem with, we should what cease to exist on those days? We should hide inside and not minister to people? Like it doesn't make sense. That it just doesn't follow, you know, logically for what they're trying to argue for. Anyways, um, so those are the eight holidays of the uh, of the witches. Um, but once again, there's a lot of, of, of difference among witches because of, of their own preferences, okay? Uh, a spell is oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes uh, cast in a circle by whoever the leader of that, you know, coven or whatever it is. Um, and so, the, so they'll cast these spells, and, you know, they'll get together in a circle and cast these spells. Um, there's uh, what's called a traditionalist, which this is where they hold to more folklore stuff or, or region-specific stuff. Like, for instance, um, um, an English uh, tradition or the Irish tradition or, you know, see what I mean? It'll be region-specific or based on that, you know, area's uh, beliefs or whatever. Gardnerian. Now, Gerald Gardner was connected with, um, I want to say Aleister Crowley. He was uh, learned from him or uh, something like that. Um, oh, my God. Um, or something like that. And uh, he went on to have a huge impact in um, witchcraft. And now there's a whole tradition after him. Uh, garden, it's called the Gardnerian uh, tradition. There's the Alexandrian tradition connected with Alexanders. Don't really want to get into him at all. This is the one I do want to get into, though. There's the Dianic tradition. Now, this is from um, the idea that witchcraft is connected with the Dianic cult. Now, if you remember your history, the, the cult of Diana from you know the ancient civilizations and stuff. No, maybe so. 
Um, I forget if she was Roman or Greek. I forget which. But the idea was, um, well, is that this tradition is more... Was it Greek? Was it Greek? Um, the, the idea is that um, it, this tradition of witchcraft is, is more uh, feminist and eco-friendly. The, the, when you, when you, this is the one that's oftentimes publicized, you know what I mean, where, where they'll have uh, it on a show or something like that where somebody will be a witch. They'll be like, Mother Earth, and they'll be like, kind of like hippies. Yeah. This is the one they're playing off of. Oh. Um, okay. Not all witches have the same emphasis. <coughs> Some of them have different emphasis, so just remember that. Um there's what's called the new – now, this is a mouthful, guys. New Reformed Orthodox Order of the Golden Dawn. What the <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Write that down, Gracie. Write it down. Let's see that. Um, <laughs> and they have, they are the ones who, who run that the, – the popular witch site, Covenant of the Goddess. Um, that's them who started it. Um, there's the Egyptian also called Neteru, uh, the gods of the Black Lands. Now, this one is actually surprisingly popular, and it's based on basically everything Egyptian. So they worship the gods of the Egyptians, follow the calendar of the Egyptians. I mean, it, okay. it's meticulous. It's like they're trying to become Egyptian. It's creepy. Huh. Um, there's actually some um, Aryan brotherhoods and stuff that, that kind of take up the chant of Egypt. I don't, I don't know why everybody's so fascinated with Egypt and religion, witches <laughs> and, and Aryan stuff. and I, I don't know. Everybody seems to want more Egyptian. I don't know. Whatever. Um, Authority is underemphasized. Whatever you want is emphasized. So that is really a main theme of all of witchcraft, and, and that's kind of the main. If I could say anything, that's kind of the main theme of all witchcraft. You, you follow all the tools of the cult, like we looked at before, that are in so much other of the cult. You know, it doesn't seem to be that unique from other occult things that we looked at. It really just doesn't. Um, it seems like, an, I'm not going to wait for you to write this down, Grace, because this is a lot of stuff here. I'm just going to go ahead, and I can turn back at the end, okay? Because I just, there's, look at how many notes that is. That's, you're going to be here all night. Um, so uh, there's the ancient goddesses, you know, that, that they looked at, um, that they kind of, modern witches have kind of taken up, I guess. Um, well, I guess I should say this first. Uh, ancient pagan civilizations all kind of mesh, you know what I mean? When, when Greek took over the world, well, then their pagan rituals combined with the other pagan ones, and everybody just kind of mixed together. And some of these um, are actually pretty familiar to some of us, like Isis and Artemis. Um, you know, those are both ancient goddesses. In the Bible, you're, you might be familiar with Asherah, uh, who is more Canaanite in origin, but it's the same, pretty much the same goddess, honestly. Um, and so you can see that witchcraft is really... Um, really has this strain throughout history to some extent. Um, now, in, in Greek idea, there was the idea of Sophia, which is wisdom. Uh, even in the Bible, it's used kind of almost uh, almost the idea of a person. Like if you read through Proverbs, for instance, it talks about lady wisdom. We talked about this earlier in the year. So eventually it developed not just as wisdom, it, it developed as a goddess. And people started treating wisdom like lady goddess okay, or, or the lady. Um, and then she kind of adapted into this secret knowledge of the feminine aspect of God. You know, it's, it's, it's creepy stuff. Like some people call the Holy Spirit the feminine aspect of God. Um, I don't know. I just don't really think he's too into that. <laughs> he's like, I'm not into this, guys. And uh, uh, Diana, or the Diana, uh, came from the Roman. <coughs> oh, was it? Yeah. And then, uh, let me see. Uh, this has had a huge revival in recent years. Like witchcraft has has gone like way, way right. popular. Right. Um, and uh, the 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 goddess worship and whatnot. Um, New Mexico has a lot of witchcraft in it, anyways. But um, you look at me like you. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, everybody oh, hears a witch. I mean, like it's down. I mean, it, down your street, I bet there's at least like. Three witches, like they're everywhere. They're mm -hmm. all over the place. Like the woman that cuts my hair, she she's really big into witchcraft. So yeah, and stuff like that. They're they're everywhere. I mean, oh, New Mexico is just trenched in it. I have no idea. Do it. La Leaves is huge for witchcraft yeah. cult practices. I I believe it. Well, it, it, um, yeah. Well, I mean, just because of the. Yeah, and so New Mexico is pretty common with it, anyways. But it's actually worldwide. You know, it's pretty common too. Um, and here's the here's the real bad news bears here, guys. Uh, a lot of Christians who are people who call themselves Christians are involved in it too. Because remember, it's just a practice, not a religion, or you know, whatever. <laughs> so there is that. 
um, which really presents a unique trouble to the new pa to the pastor of the yeah. modern age. Uh -huh. You can say something, and here's the thing: we've been preaching the same gospel, but we have to use different words because witches and these kinds of people in the cult redefine the words that you use. Oh. You can say one thing, and they hear something completely different. You can talk about Jesus dying for us, and you know what they hear? Huh. Jesus realizing realize that he was the Christ, and so we can follow in his footsteps and realize that we are Christ's. This kind of stuff is like, wait, are, that's not uh, what I said, though. But no matter how careful you are, they twist what you say because they redefine everything that you say. Okay. So we as pastors are literally having to revisit these basic concepts to, so that people know, hey, this is actually wrong. And they're like, no, it's not wrong. It's like, yes, it is actually wrong. Like, you know what I mean? You, there was a day when, when it was just obvious that these things were wrong. But in a culture that is so entrenched in the cult, it's not obvious because everybody is doing it. Like, it's everywhere. And so no more do we can we stand by the old principles of, oh, we don't have to explain this. No, we do have to explain this. Very much so. Um, anyways, uh, gods and goddesses are spirit parts of the universe. Okay, so you know it, nature has its own you know power to it and everything. But then there's uh, gods and goddesses which are, are, are spiritual, kind of like uh, I want to say emanations, but spiritual parts of that universe. Okay, but they're all still connected. Um, the, obviously, for a lot of it, Earth is is the mother goddess and whatnot. A uh, circle of life uh, may include reincarnation if the person chooses, but if they so choose to reincarnate, uh, they also get to choose which lesson they think that they should learn. So I sure hope oh. that they l learn it correctly. <laughs> uh. Okay, so that takes us to the to the druids. Now the druids were actually. Um, oh, I wanted to read this to you guys. Uh, this is common teachings in goddess worship, witchcraft, and Wicca. Witchcraft is practice. Wicca is a religion. Uh, multiple god goddesses and gods exist as spirit parts. I already said that. The earth is alive. She is the goddess. All living things are sacred. Experience is the most important thing. Beliefs are secondary. That's actually very common in witchcraft. Beliefs are secondary. Experience is primary. Okay? Huh. Which is why, once again, the witches are so common in this culture because it's just our culture is feeding it and is fed from it. The idea of you just believe whatever you want to believe. And just experience things, just enjoy life, just just pleasure, carpe diem. It's just perfect for witchcraft to, to thrive in our society. It's, it's perfect for it. Um, all living things are already said that uh, goddesses and gods have supernatural powers and wisdom that can help people. Um, human beings as part of the divine contain energy that can be used to affect changes. See what I mean? Human beings as part of the divine. How many how many religions have you looked at that said that? That were part of the divine, right? Or part of that spark. Um, I already said about the circle of life. After death, the spirit goes to a place of beauty and, and, and peace called the Summerland, but it's not heaven. Um, and not all spirits have to reincarnate. Um, you kind of get to choose. There is no such thing as original sin, evil, or Satan. It is not possible to it is not possible to call up the dead, but they often communicate communicate to the living in dreams. Magic is a way to change things within and without. Bad magic exists, but if a pagan chooses to send it out, it will more than likely rebound on them. Did you hear that? Yeah. Bad music is and bad magic is out there, but most of the time it will come back on you. <laughs> so all life to, now remember, there is a such thing as good and bad magic. <coughs> But they've convinced themselves that there is. All life depends on the four sacred elements, air, fire, water, and earth. Um, a fifth element called the spirit is found in the center. That's just kind of an idea there. Anyways, back to druids. Uh, druids are from the, um, I want to say the Irish, that kind of section around England and whatnot. Um, crap, dang it. I forget if it was Irish, Scottish, or English. It sounds more Irish. It's Yeah. I don't remember. Anyways, um... Yeah, obviously it's very ancient. Now there's a lot of conflicting views on druids. In fact, a lot of mo modern historians have tried to like rewrite their history. They weren't that bad of people, you know. They didn't do that. Okay, let me tell you about some of the things that they did. First off, they did human sacrifices. Second off, they did this thing where they would stab their victim, and how they fell and how the blood gushed out and all these different things they would use to tell the future. 
Does that sound like a good people to you? Stab you. You're going to die. Um, they had a special language of the gods, which as far as we can tell, that would be the demon, demonic, you know, speak, yeah. demons speaking through people. Um, they practiced magic. There, there was a priestly class that was the druids. The druids were the priestly class, and everybody else was just kind of peons. They, they ran the society. They ran everything. Okay. Um, any attempt to rewrite that and say, no, they were just, you know, these, you know, innocent people. It's like, well, that's not what history says, though. Uh -huh. Um... It could actually, it's showing that it's either, it's all three, Welsh, Irish, and Gaelic. So Welsh Gaelic. was the one I was thinking of. So that's kind of the same area there. Uh, okay, so, um, I want to tell you guys a story that was in the book. Um, there was a witch, um, who'd been a witch for a long time, was actually, you know, a fairly well-known witch, and, you know, uh, was a leader of an online community and that kind of stuff. Uh, well, anyway, she became ill and actually lost 70% hearing in both of her ears, right? So she had to have uh, um, age. hearing aid, yes. And they tried, she tried all the different things, like the the Reiki stones and stuff yeah. that we looked at in the Tools of the Cult, all that stuff. Um, and it just didn't really seem to work. Well, she got this this feeling like she needed to go to church. Um, well, it started, she had these dreams of Jesus and you know, said, come and follow me. And she's like, man, that was some weird pizza I ate. So she didn't eat any pizza that night. And then it <laughs> happened again. Another dream of it. So she got this desire to go to church. Now, her and her husband both grew up in Christian traditions. One was, I think, a, a Baptist, and the other one was um, something. I don't figure which. And so she was pretty much opposed to this. But uh, anyways, she ended up going. Um, and uh, the pastor, uh, she was saying about how most of the time when people talk, especially preachers, they don't talk where it's easy to read their lips. But when she got there, this it actually was at an Assemblies of God church, which I thought was funny. Uh, um, the pastor talked in such a way where she could read every single word that he said from his lips, which was, you know, obviously pretty cool. And so she yeah. went up to say, you know, hey, that was really cool that, you know, I could actually read your lips. And so the pastor said, can I, can I pray for you? Because she, obviously why she needed to read the lips came up in the conversation. And so she says, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, and uh, so he prays for her and she gets very, very sick. And so she starts throwing up and everything. And then she just really felt the need to, um, to uh, to abandon her gods, uh, and so she had to call them all by name and, and tell them you know to leave and everything. But here's the thing: she was one of the, one of the Egyptian tradition, oh. and the Egyptians had a had a god for everything. <laughs> and so she was sitting there all afternoon, I think, and into the night, into the next day, um, you know, rebuking the different gods that she had been worshiping. And so obviously, it took a long time, wow. a, a long time. Um, and anyways, uh, long story short. Um, she went and was talking to her husband with her hearing aids out because you don't, you know, she, she took them out, you know, while she was sick and while she was sleeping, that kind of stuff. Um, and she could hear him perfectly and she didn't even realize it. And she's like, wait, I didn't need my hearing aids. And so long story short, she got saved and was healed from it. And I guess the illness was connected with the demonic activity. Wow. Or it was either it was either a demon was causing it or God was giving it as a punishment and removed the punishment when she got saved. I don't know. She didn't specify, and it, I guess it really didn't right. come up. But it right. seems like it was an effect of the demonic, if I'm going to take a guess. Anyways, I just thought that was an interesting story. Oh, um, so the appeal of all this, obviously, real encounters, it, it does fulfill an emotional need. It does fulfill an emotional need. Uh... A lot of times people just, I mean, we live in in a culture that pretends like it's science, scientific. It's yeah. really not, but it pretends to be. And so obviously people feel, oh, it's easy to feel like you don't belong anywhere in this kind of, you know what I mean? Because we all evolved. Your life has no meaning. Everybody's online all the time. Nobody has interaction with each other. Well, it's just very easy to feel like you don't belong anywhere. And so obviously um, that is a huge appeal in the cult, the, the idea of belonging somewhere. Um, it's the unknown world, and things just seem, I think, more exciting when we don't know what they are. Um, however, um, it's worth mentioning once again that God is all-powerful. He is still capable of breaking all the chains, chains that, 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 that come on people with the cult activity. Um, he is still more powerful. He is still in, in control. Um, and so I'll very quickly go through traditional religions because there's just not much that I want to say about this. Um, traditional religions, uh, when I say that term, I'm more talking about um, Native Americans, African na uh, Native African beliefs, that kind of an idea, okay? So um, all things have spirits. This is very common in traditional religions. 
Um, a lot of times traditional religions are kind of treated as the more primitive religions. Um, and I, I, I guess I see where that comes from, but it's kind of way too oversimplified to say that it's a primitive religion. Um, which is why I stuck with the wording traditional religion that this book uses. Um, energy is there for, uh, is there to use for good or bad. You know, it's very common to, like, in Native American practice, they have different things like, you know, uh, dream catchers and stuff, which, you know, right. because there are, there are, there's good uh, energy out there. Um, there's many gods, but there's only one supreme, if, in most, if not all traditional religions, there's only one supreme god. Okay? Now, a lot of them will have the idea that he's unreachable, that he's, um, you know, man can't understand him, man man can't communicate with him because he's too, you know, set apart from them, and so uh, communication with the lower gods is really the only option there. Um, uh, Jesus is irrelevant in most of these teachings because um, you can just practice the different things, and there's not necessarily a next life. So you can just practice different things to, you know, fulfill what the creator has or whatever. Um, and obviously Satan then is non-existent. Uh, it's, it's more of, um, you know, some, t some of them say that there are evil spirits and stuff. Uh, but some of them just say it's, you know, people using things wrong and that kind of stuff. Uh, so natives, um, when we talk about traditional religions, it's important to note that these are people who had everything changed for them. Okay. Now, Northern Africa was part of the Roman Empire, so they um, experienced the Christianization when 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 Christianity became you know the big thing for Roman Empire in the 300s. Okay. Now, Southern Africa really didn't experience that. Okay. So then, as Islam took off in the 600s, they came down through that northern tip of Africa where Christianity was, and Islam got going in there. But then there were still traditional religions, and so northern Africa has its own thing that's going on there. You might, if you're familiar with the news, how Africa is in a lot of, a large part of northern Africa is in civil wars and has Boko Haram and the different Islamic groups and that kind of stuff going on. Well, this is all a cause and effect of all these different things that have happened in Africa. Really, Africa got the short end of the stick on Africa. Thing. Like, the place has just been screwed so many times by so many different empires. Like, oh my gosh, just leave them alone already. Um, so anyways, uh, and you have to remember, these people were separated from their homeland and their way of life. Right. Whether we're talking about the Native Americans who used to roam freely and now they're segregated to small sects of land. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just cruel and inhumane. Right. And here's the thing. The Native, the Native American heritage is one of a proud people. It mm -hmm. really is. Yeah. And we have literally destroyed, destroyed them. them. We yeah. may have kept some of them alive, but they're not alive. Like they can't roam. They, oh, their whole way of life has had to change. They're, they're, you know, they can't. And for a large part of, of history, they couldn't even practice their religion because it was outlawed and that kind of right. stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like what we did to them is just terrible. Like, it, really? if if you talk to Native Americans now, their spirits are broken. Like, I honestly wonder if it wouldn't have been better to just die honorably. Like, at least they would have died knowing who they were. Yeah. Now America has so ruined them that it's just it's terrible. And I the thing what is, we brought what we brought over alcohol and. I don't even want to get into that yeah, whole thing. But, but, what were you, you know, gonna say? Like I heard of a kid getting suspended from school because he was speaking his native tongue. Uh -huh. And they're like, well, we can't understand you, so we don't even know if you what you're saying is real or not. It's like I'm just uh, trying to spread my culture. There's there's a lot of, of um, misunderstanding about it on I think on both ends um, you know as a as a Native American growing up in this culture you don't know who you are and so you really cling on to whatever you can find and obviously the white man does what the white man has always done and gets intimidated and, and I mean kinda, yeah. and you know the thing is is Christians have literally screwed themselves with the Native Americans because Native Americans, even ones who are Christians, don't even call themselves Christians because they don't want to be associated with that. You know what I mean? They'll call themselves something else, but they won't call themselves that because it's the white man thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're so used to being screwed by us that you know how hard it is to evangelize these people now? Like, 
They're not interested anyway, so we have to think of new ways to reach these people. And to make no mistake, God does want us to reach them. We just have to think of a new creative way to reach them. Um, so, you know, but, and not only that, but when we think about the African Americans too, I mean, this is what happened. African tribes and that kind of stuff were at war with each other. Well, there was obviously a victor, so they sold themselves into slavery. Yes, I know that's hard to hard to believe. White people did not sell black people into slavery. White people bought the black people from other black people. Then those white people took them into their uh, colonies and their, their different things. Okay, now this is where it starts because some of those African slaves were taken to Haiti. Now in Haiti, they tried to kind of forced them to become Catholic, but they didn't actually tell them the doctrine because they didn't want them to know too much. <laughs> so that... Okay. What are you going to say? I said nice. So, as a result, the Africans decided to stop getting beat by claiming to be Catholic, but all that they did is they kept their tradition and used Catholic terms to mask it. Okay? Which is why it's called Haitian voodoo, or Vodan, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's where modern day voodoo comes from. Huh. African beliefs mixed with trying to force them to become Catholic without actually converting them or telling them what you're converting them to. <laughs> I mean, just like jacked up crap. Like, they just created the. You know, the worst thing that has ever happened to the Christian church as a whole is that moment in the Roman Empire when Christianity became the thing in the early 300s, all the way. Well, where do you want to stop it? Right. Because <laughs> it's still a thing, you know, where, where the old-timey people would be like, America is God's chosen nation, and it's like, oh, my no, no, no. God. You know, and then you have the whole, uh, what's it called, where they where they tried to uh, force Indians to be, um, uh, what's it called? The Manifest Destiny, that's what it's yeah. called. Um, anyways, um, and then these people were treated as uncivilized, and they were treated, no matter how you want to say it, they were treated as less than human. You know, there, there's definitely a standard of how you treat people. And some people have tried to, like, argue their way out of it, but it's like this. Would they have treated a white person that same way? No, they didn't. They didn't treat white people that same way. So, therefore, they were not treating them as humans. Like, you, I don't know why people have such a hard time believing this. So then what some modern-day Christians try to do is they just try to say, you know what? It's all in the past. Leave it alone. I, I totally agree with, with the idea of that, that we need to find peace. But here's the thing. Have you ever told a minority that they need to leave it alone? Uh, Have you ever told them that? That's the greatest way to lose your witness to them possible. To where I do think that we need to definitely find a, a resolution to these things, and I don't think the resolution is going to be in all white people saying that they're racist. I think that's just stupid. You know, I've been called a racist so many times. I can't even count how many times I've been called a racist. I'm not a racist. Like you can't just call somebody a racist just because they don't agree with Barack Obama. I mean, let's just be honest here. I don't like to bring up politics, but I don't agree with everything that any president has done ever. That doesn't make me a racist. That makes me a discerning citizen. Except Reagan. <laughs> well, he was Jesus, you know. So, uh, anyways, uh, and so there's a lot of different uh, native, you know. Sections there, there's the Yoruba, Obeya, Miles, Centuria. I didn't, I didn't want to talk about really any of these people except for the Africans broadly, Native Americans broadly, and Voodoo more specifically, okay? So that's what I'll do. Um, African, this is African belief in a nutshell. Obviously, there's distinctions in different areas of Africa, obviously, but these are just the simplified versions there. Powerful forces exist, and the, those powerful forces can be utilized. Fate is one powerful force, but it can be defeated by a divine trickster. Um, natural spirits exist along with spirits of deceased and can both impact life. So basically, their things have spirits like trees and that kind of stuff. Okay, and then there's like the dead ancestors, you know, those kinds of spirits, and all those spirits can interact, can impact our life. Okay, so uh, religion and magic is inseparable. So for the I Christian idea that we don't practice magic, it's kind of like a mind blower for someone who grew up with the traditional religion. <coughs> like, how can you not practice magic if you serve God? You know what I mean? They don't they don't see the possibility. So obviously there's a huge thing there. Um, now anything bad you do is not going to come back on you in judgment or in that kind of stuff. In hell, it's going to come back now. So as a result, it's very common, um, the kind of idea that, did you have a bad day today? That was because of what you did this morning or because of what you did yesterday. See what I mean? That kind of stuff. Um, so that takes us to voodoo, which as I said, came from, um, from the... 
African slaves uh, and, and you know with all that nonsense with Haiti and whatnot. But then get this. Then there was this whole problem where the Catholic Church ended up pulling out of Haiti for two generations, right? Huh. So then these people who already weren't taught the gospel had no spiritual teachers there to at least give them a chance for two generations. So that means the parents were then handing down this, well, voodoo, you know, this mixed match of pagan and Christianity to their kids, which means it probably adapts, adapted some and, you know, changed. Um, now, voodoo uh, people claimed that they needed to practice it in order to maintain health and their well-being. Okay? Uh, it's considered, you know, a part of their life. You know, they don't see it as... I'm a person and I practice voodoo. They say, you know, it's not like that. It's more of a uh, uh, an all-inclusive, you know, theme of their life. Um, they do contact spirits uh, through different things. You know, they don't see it like that. Once again, they see it. Remember how I said right here? They're contacting these, uh, you know, these spirits and different things to try and get good things to happen in their life and that kind of stuff. Um, but obviously, we know that they're contacting demons. So whereas voodoo is is demonic and voodoo definitely does is like you know done with dark things absolutely a lot of people don't really understand the heart of voodoo and the reason the thing that it could have been completely it, it, voodoo could have not been a thing if the christians would have just simply done their job in the first place mm -hmm. like oh that irritates me anyways um uh so the, uh, and these people were forced into these religions. I already said about that. Uh, and the Native Americans actually had penalties that were given if they didn't follow certain things. Like I just thought, to, like, <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, there was a woman who came into a hospital uh, a couple days before her twenty third birthday, and uh, she told the doctor, "I think I'm going to die before I get my twenty third birthday." And you know, so they admitted her, but they said, "Why do you think this is going to happen?" She said, "I was born." With this, uh, what are they called? Uh, a maid or whatever. They, they help the mom give birth oh, when they're not uh, in the hospital. Wife. What? Midwife. Midwife, yes. By this midwife who was a, a voodoo midwife. And they were born on the 13th. And so she cursed all three of these babies that she helped deliver. That they wouldn't reach these different birthdays. And both of the other girls had died before they reached the birthdays that she had said. So oh, she was yeah. terrified. And, and, and she went and, and she got admitted and everything. And... They they monitored her and everything. They went in there to check on her, and she died a couple hours before her twenty third birthday. Oh. So and and the, they actually had a lot of different examples of that. Um, it seems like voodoo curses are very much so real. Um, you know, a lot of times voodoo practitioners will say no, there's really no danger in it, but the record shows that there is a lot of danger in it. Now I haven't included as many examples from as many different sources as I could have. But there's a lot of evidence saying that voodoo curses are definitely a thing, okay? Now, as a Christian, do we have to worry about voodoo curses? No. Yes and no. no. Okay? If someone, if a voodoo person was to, was to place a curse on you, yeah. I would strongly recommend going to the Lord in prayer. Right. So I would strongly recommend that. Um, however, we have to remember that it is just a demon. And demons don't have power over Jesus. Okay, so I wouldn't be paranoid about it, but I would say Cautious. probably pray, right? I mean, that seems like a good thing to do in such a situation. I've never been cursed to my face, at least, so I don't know for sure, but it seems like that would be the thing to do. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there, but it does definitely seem like people who are not saved don't have any kind of a, kind of a barrier of protection, you know, so um, that is definitely something worth thinking about. Now, Native Americans. Um, there's obviously, once again, this is kind of a theme resounding, no distinction between life and religion. Uh, they were forced to convert. I already talked about that. Now, here's the thing. They, they had these laws that were put against them, um, which, I mean, oh my gosh, just... <sighs> the things, guys, the things. Dang it. I can't find it right now. But anyways, they had these things where, where they actually published laws and stuff, or passed laws against the Native American practices, and made it where they couldn't you know, do these things, and they were met with fines. 
they were met with imprisonment. They were met with food rations being taken away. Wow. It's like, wow, those are some racist laws. And I'm not talking about Christians here. I'm talking about the U.S. government. Yeah. Like, it's insane. Totally insane. Uh, this was in the late 1800s, uh, early 1900s. And uh, it's just crazy. It blew my mind. I was like, this was only 100 years ago. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, now I guess 130 years now. Um, let's see. I already talked about the great spirit of the creator. You know, the traditional religions have that. Nature is sacred. I already looked at that. Um, all things have spirits. That's just kind of a resounding theme. Um, obviously, I talked about the way the Christian has bad, uh, has bad association because of white people. All that nonsense that follows. Really no way around that. And the thing is, Christians need to be less concerned with, with – see, what people are – Christians are doing is they're getting divided on the issues. You have some Christians who are trying to be so politically correct that it's just nonsensical, okay? But then you have other Christians who are just trying to avoid the issue in total, and this is how we actually need to look at it. How, how did they see this issue, and how can we get around that issue to witness to them? See, what, but the problem is, is people are so concerned with getting their point of view across. Well, I think they need to get over it. Well, I think we need to do this. It's like, okay, how about you guys just listen to them and try to find a way to reach them? I don't know about you, but that just seems like a really good idea. Or we could continue to argue about pointless nonsense that probably there will be another issue in 50 more years about something else that somebody did wrong. Or we can focus on how to save people. I don't know. It seems like people are really getting off offhand on this one. Now, Indians do have a, a bad medicine or, or a bad a bad side to that uh, spirit oneness that, that they talk about a lot, and these are called skinwalkers. Um, tradition, Native American tradition holds that they can actually transform into other animals, yes. that kind of stuff. You see that in, in movies and stuff. Uh, these are the Indian form of a witch. Um, they're looked down on. These people are feared in the Native com uh, Indian community. And uh, so that brings us to the idea, can they actually change form? The idea would be probably not, I'm assuming here, <laughs> probably not. I don't think that that's a thing that people can do. Um, could a demon hypothetically make somebody appear like something? I guess, yeah. yeah. Could a demon appear as something and make people think that it was the person? Yeah. Yes. But does the person actually change into another animal? I'm going to say no. That doesn't seem like something that's a thing. <laughs> However, it's hard to hard to say because I've never seen it. Don't you dare say Twilight. No. Don't you dare no. say Twilight. No, 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 no. no, I know somebody, a credible source, that was driving on the Mascalero mm -hmm. reservation, and there was a runner. Um, there, you know, you have to go slow. Yeah. And there was a runner running right beside them, and like a second later, they looked over, and there was like a dog, and they looked all around because they stopped. They looked all around. And they couldn't find the runner. Hmm. Really weird. Uh, Unexplained yeah. stuff, guys. Unexplained so, stuff. Here's what we do. Let's go up there and let's say, where's let's, your skinwalker? Let's see him change. Yeah. Let's, let's right. do a stick Let's do this. <laughs> do this. So, I mean, I'm not going to really... I'm trying not to take a stance on this. I'm honestly not trying to take a stance at all. Because... I, I think that this that's not really a thing, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I have an experience, so I don't really know. The, the, the one disease, uh, loop, uh, lupus, lupus or uh, where they think they're Schizophrenia? transforming. I have no idea what you're talking about. Like I'm not even get, I'm not even gonna like pretend on this one's like I have no idea what you're talking about. There's actually a a a a, uh, a name that. They actually think that they're transforming into a wolf. Well, see, that would make sense if they weren't around other people who s claim to have seen them right. in a different form. Right. See, so that doesn't really answer for what about those other people. So, uh, did, did it stick if there's a, a purpose for them to turn into an animal? Or oh, uh, well, some sometimes there's there's purposes and sometimes it's not. I mean, it's just a different well, thing. Like, hey, I, I can turn into an animal. Well, well, it seems like they're related times. specifically with the different things that they're doing. You know, either, but, or either they're back in that eight, late 18 or early 1700s that, uh, depending on the tribes, if they're rival tribes, they might. Is this something you saw on the History Channel? No. 
<laughs> I'm just joking. Because I was making fun of the History yeah. Channel. Yeah. It was what? <laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, so that's just something that, that we're really not not sure on. I'm not really going to take a stance on. You guys can arrive at your own conclusions. Um, some popularizations of, of uh, Native American culture I've already talked about multiple times. Dreamcatchers and Kachina dolls, for instance. These have become... It's, it's almost funny. These things have become like symbols of the Native American culture down here. Even though Kachina dolls were actually really only associated with like one tribe. I think it was the Hopi, I think. Or Hopi, I think is how they pronounce it. Um, I want to say that that's who it was. But... Then they kind of got it where it's, oh, it's Native American. It's like, well, no, 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 there's no. a lot of different Native Americans out there. Like, uh, I don't know. They don't like to all be classified. They yeah, really yeah. don't. They really don't. Especially it seems how some of them really don't like some of the other tribes. Yes. So well, there is that. Well, because they, they all had different... Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so then the Dreamcatchers was, was an example of, okay, so this is, okay, so it started in possibly this one. I think it was like the Iroquois or something like that. And, no, it wasn't them. It was someone else. Uh, crap, I can't remember. I am really sorry. Uh, anyways, uh, they're not even sure which tribe it originally may have uh, came from. And so then it kind of became a thing, a symbol for all of them, but now it's become just a, a, an American thing because the dream catchers that you see now in the stores, that's not how you make dream catchers. They're made out of the wrong material, and uh, they have the wrong people making them. It's not supposed to be made in a, in a, in a, in a factory and that kind of stuff. So it's supposedly for Native Americans, but na some Native Americans see it as a symbol of hope that they're all united against, obviously, the white people and the government. So <laughs> right. there's that. Uh, or some of them see it as as a very bad thing. They're like, American culture has ruined our culture, and now they're even taking our dream catcher. So it just really depends who you talk to. <laughs> right, right. Um, but anyways, um, so just a lot of stuff there to chew on. Um, and so the Question of the week, what do you do, not just in the spiritual realm, but also the physical realm, to combat the occult? Now, the reason why I didn't spend a whole lot of time this week in looking at the practices, more specifically in combating those practices um, of the different, you know, witchcraft and that kind of stuff, is because the occult really has the same things that just appear in different forms. You know what I mean? Like Ouija boards. Yeah. Just like seances. Just like, you see what I mean? It's all a, an attempt to, to contact the dead. Regardless of whether you think that those dead are, are spirits, or demons, or ancestors, or, you know, it doesn't matter what you think it is. It's all you're, They're all doing the same thing. They're just calling it something different. See what I mean? So I, I didn't want to spend too much time every single week repeating myself on, <laughs> you know, com on, on how these views are wrong. I figured, you know, we already looked at it, so... Right. That's one of the reasons why I had a whole two-part lesson just looking at the tools of the occult. Yes, see, these are the kinds of things that are very common. It's just kind of repeated in all the different things. So any questions for what we looked at? Yeah. Zach. Um, what, I have a question for you. Uh, what, uh, what do you think? Well, Purple. It's purple. <laughs> my, my grandmother had mentioned that my mom was a little girl. She used to do a a dance, a Cherokee dance, uh, and she brought the rain. A rain dance. A rain dance, yeah. Okay. What do you think about? What do I think about what? That, that the dance. rain dance? Yeah. I think that. There's nothing inherently wrong with dancing, but I think that rain dances are not dancing. Rain dances are a form of occult practice uh -huh. to manipulate manipulate the forces of the earth, uh -huh. in this case, to bring rain. And so, from what we've looked at with the occult, it, it, it's very, um, it's it's it's, it, it, to me at least, it seems very obviously an occultic practice right. that was very much so a part of Native American culture. But as a Christian, we probably shouldn't, you right, know, right, right, do those right. kind of things. No, no, I, and well, the fact, the fact that uh, my mom doesn't hate go Cherokee, and mm -hmm. I, my brother and I are are sixteenth Cherokee. Actually, we have actually uh, my family has a lot of Indian in us too, and yeah. she does too. Her right. grandpa yeah, was, I mean, like if you was, saw, yeah. I saw a picture of him. I think he, your mom. He, was, he was pretty much full blood Indian, mm -hmm. a lot of Cherokee. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, like yeah. yeah exactly. I have Cherokee too. Yeah. They say that they say that, what's it called the Cherokee Princess is that what they say? <laughs> you know that everybody has some yeah, in it or whatever. Anyways, um, well the the thing is that you got to watch out for is 
that those kinds of things actually do bring results. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that's why people think it's okay for me to do it because it brings a result. And that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says don't do it. <laughs> See what I mean? So, it doesn't say it won't bring a result. Right. Just don't and in fact, the, the thing is, is a lot of times it will bring a result. You know, a lot of occultic stuff. Seances. You think that every single seance a demon shows up at? No, probably not. But a lot of seances, a demon does show up. Right. See what I mean? So, um, is any other questions? I have a question with uh, uh, further on with uh, Zach's question. So it shows results, right? Mm -hmm. I I thought God was in control of like you know the weather and stuff. How how did, how are demons able to manipulate the weather? Demons, the demonic realm has a a limited amount of power. Now obviously it's all subject to God. God can make it stop. For instance, let's say for instance a, a demon, someone does a, does a rain dance and a demon, uh, the demonic realm starts bringing in rain. God can push that rain back and stop the rain. Like right. he can, like he can he do that. He has last words, right. right? He has, yeah. you know, absolutely everything that happens. He either permits or causes. There's right. nothing in the world that has happened that God was out of control. Yeah. Even Adam and Eve falling, he was perfectly capable of, inter of intervening. He didn't because he gave them the choice of either obeying or disobeying. Yeah. Okay. So he let he let them have that choice. But he was always in control. It wasn't like he said, oh, crap, I forgot. The it's like when we leave and we leave the stove on. Oh, crap, I left Adam and Eve unintended. You know, he knew that it was going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? So with that being said, the demonic realm does have power. And they, it is. we looked at this, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, where like Job, for instance, where, where Satan was able to cause nations to go to war. Right. He was, he was able to cause physical harm. He was able to take away finances. He, he's able, in, in some context, to bring to bring rain and that kind of stuff. Um, absolutely, the, the demonic realm does have a, a power, and that's one of the things I've really been trying to emphasize: is don't underestimate the demonic realm because Satan does have power. And if your power is not from God, it is from Satan. There's only two power sources in the world or in the universe. See what I mean? Does that kind of answer that question? So God does give uh, uh, demons limited power, and he will he will definitely allow them to do some things like bring rain, and uh, oftentimes this will just further people to say, okay, this is an excuse for why it's okay for me to not serve God but to serve this other thing. In fact, God said it like this in Deuteronomy. When these prophets do these things and what they say actually happens, you know, they, they bring results, and then they say, let's go and worship other gods, don't listen to them because I am testing you. It doesn't say because because they did this thing. It says because I am testing you, and we should see it as the same kind of thing when um, when the cult does different things and they get results, like the rain dance. Where, but it brought results because God's testing us. Are you gonna are you gonna start trusting stressing them, or are you gonna still seek my face? Are you gonna follow uh, whatever you get the results on, or are you gonna place your faith and your trust in me as your God? So I mean, God will always give us that choice. He doesn't ever. Um, take away our choice of either serving him or rebelling from him. Mm -hmm. He'll always give us that choice of doing that. I think a lot of times uh, people turn to the occult just because they see an immediate reaction. Yeah, and that's one of the things I've been trying to emphasize. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say something else and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. What was the last thing I said? Uh, uh, like the last sentence. You know what? Doesn't matter. Any other questions? We're good. Very cool. Now, uh, before I stop, just because the demonic has power doesn't mean we should underestimate God's power. Right. Okay, I do want to say that. Don't underestimate Satan and and what he is capable of doing, but don't glorify it. You know, what I mean, don't be don't be afraid of it. By all means, don't be afraid of it. Like some people are afraid of voodoo because of this, that, and the other thing. Don't be afraid of these kinds of things. Like.